So the right to privacy is not something that is actually explicitly stated within the Constitution. Uh, in fact, the Supreme Court justices have looked at the first, third, fourth, fifth, and ninth amendments and kind of created the right to privacy. Uh, the first amendment for things like freedom of speech, freedom of religion, the third amendment, which is where it's about the only time we'll ever actually reference the third amendment in, in a political science course, but it talks about how the government cannot force the quartering of soldiers. Fourth Amendment talking about legal search and seizure, Fifth Amendment due process, and Ninth Amendment basically states that just because something is not in the Constitution does not mean that it, there are other rights that are not post, posed in the Constitution. So just because it's in the Constitution, that's not just what we're limited to. There's things that are also out there. And this ultimately can come down to the controversy over abortion, which we will talk about in a second. So privacy is implied in the Constitution through the First Amendment with the right to religion. And you have a right to express your private beliefs. You can you can hold whichever faith you want. Um, you know, thinking about just in Northern Kentucky alone, we have the Church of Scientology, we have the Catholic Church, we have the Christian churches, we have Crossroads, we have, um, you know, we have Muslim centers, we have, we have all of these different diverse groups when it comes to religion. So the, the, the government does not have the ability to regulate religious thought. So you have this idea of a private belief that you are entitled to as a citizen of the country. Second is the idea of search and seizure. If a police officer wants to get something into your house, they have the they have a right to go in, but they have to follow a procedure. They do not have the right just to walk into your front door and violate your right to privacy. So they have outlined through the Fourth Amendment different ways that police officers can do this, but there has to be some sort of reasonable reasonable suspicion or reasonable probable cause, I'm sorry, to, to access your home. So you do have a right to stop police officers on, uh, you know, just stepping onto your property or anything like that without a purpose. And then finally, you have a right to be left alone. Um, you know, there's a lot of cases just in general, the idea of civil liberties, um, where civil liberties are kind of defined as protection from government involvement. Uh, so the idea that, that the government does not have the right to access every aspect of our life. And this issue really kind of plays out over the controversy of abortion uh, in, in the case is Roe v. Wade in 1973, um, which is a case that you do need to know it is mandatory for the course. Uh, it oftentimes will show up in an FRQ at the end or in some form on the multiple choice. So it is something that you do need to make sure that you're aware of. But Roe v. Wade outlaws uh, banning abortion in the, the second and third trimester. Basically, it is a state is not allowed to ban an abortion in the first trimester, but it can ban abortions in the second and third trimester of a pregnancy. So uh, legally and constitutionally, the woman or a woman has a right to privacy from the government infringing upon her rights when it comes to abortion. What this has created is a balancing test between the women's health as well as the prenatal life. And you have seen this play out in certain states and, and most notably within the last couple of years, or I guess about within the last 20 years, um, you've seen a shift more to the power of the states to ban abortions, but even that is starting to slowly change uh, and you're starting to see kind of a limitation on the banning of abortions. You know, I know Louisiana just posted some law or tried to pass a law uh, that would have essentially uh, a doctor would have had to have had um, admitting rights into a hospital in order to perform an abortion. And that went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court basically ruled that that is too much of a restriction um, so that, that that was overturned and it wasn't the case. Um, so you're seeing kind of a balancing act between at what point are we protecting prenatal life as well as what point are we protecting women's health. Um, but there is this idea that there is a right to privacy in that sense. And that has ultimately kind of transformed into some other areas as well. Uh, and in contemporary issues, we're talking about things like the Internet. Um, can the government regulate what is said on the Internet? Can the government, you know, be res like responsible to, or are you, are you responsible for everything that is going on on the internet? Um, or can the government access our emails like in the Patriot Act? You know, one of the big things with the Patriot Act is it was passed with the mindset that we're going to do what we can to prevent another 9-11 from happening. 
Um, however, we're starting to see people who even, if, you know, something as simple as the TSA uh, going on to an airplane. Um, you're starting to see people who have never been accused of anything, never have a criminal record that are now subject to their, their cell phones being collected or their data being collected, um, emails being collected or monitored and, and the pat downs at the airport. So these are just some issues that have come up uh, recently with with uh, the right to privacy. But ultimately, this was something that was created by the Supreme Court through the interpretation of the, the Constitution that we have still content continued to develop over the course of time.